Hello, welcome back. Today's magical product is the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse for Mac. It's been a while, but I'm back. For now, anyways. I have another video on my list I haven't been able to start on yet. Also, I'm very sorry I haven't done my nails in ages since I'm always busy with something, so they wouldn't have time to dry, so now you're forced to watch my chip nail struggle to open a box that really isn't that hard. Again. Yep. And this is my life. Sneaky look, why is this so thin so much? Oh finally. That's that's what I was expecting. Nice matte black box for the aesthetic. Matte black. At least this box was much easier to open. The texture on the majority of the mouse is nice. It's a grippy silicone texture, so it'll stay matte no matter how sweaty your hands get, and feels much better than smooth plastic to hold. The scroll wheels are made of machined steel, which feel amazing to use. As I tried demonstrating, it's so satisfying to whip the main one up and down. There's a button to change the scroll mode, and a button on the bottom of the thumb rest, both of which are programmable. The mouse itself has a fair bit of heft to it. It's not heavy per se, it actually feels really nice to use, but you will need a mouse pad that allows it to glide easily. The buttons are also so satisfying and easy to click. I really wish I'd done a better job at peeling this. All my on-camera peels are always so bad. And that sticker contains the instructions for setting up your mouse and switching between devices. The mouse is capable of tracking on any surface, including, according to Logitech, glass. I have personally tested it on a few different surfaces and it works great. The mouse also has two prominent buttons for your thumb. These come with presets, but of course you can change them. And I probably had way too much coffee at this point because my hands looked like I was in an earthquake. This version of the MX Master 3 is specifically for Mac, meaning it connects only by Bluetooth and brings a Type-C to Type-C cable to charge. It also only comes in the space gray color, while the original comes in mid gray, which is a light gray, or graphite, which looks almost like this one. Although this one is specified for Mac, those are really the only differences. Either mouse will still work with Mac or Windows, so the choice is yours based on whether you want just a USB-C charging cable and purely Bluetooth connection, or a USB-C to USB-A charging cable along with a USB receiver for the option of non-Bluetooth connection. I downloaded the Logitech Options app and was able to customize all my buttons. My only complaint is that there isn't a command you can set that will perform the force touch that is possible on the trackpad. I would really love for that to be an option. I've also only been able to charge the mouse using the cable that comes in the box. I've tried all my other Type-C cables and none of them work for longer than 30 seconds, so uh, don't lose that cable. <laughs> I set one of these side buttons to split clip, the other one is cut, I temporarily forgot which is which. The side scroll wheel is uh, tighter than the main scroll wheel, but I appreciate its heft, and it's not hard to use at all since you'd use your thumb for that one. It's a godsend for editing video. I swear my desktop is not usually this busy. I clean it up every few days into folders or trash. But anyways, I customized that bottom thumb button to perform the operations of three finger swipes on the trackpad. I wanted to demonstrate the speed of the scroll. So here's the page I was reading about how to get my Animal Crossing Island to three stars. Spoiler alert, I did it a few days after this was filmed. 
At the time of recording this voiceover, which is near the date this will go live, I have achieved a five-star island and then lost it after a friend of mine dumped a bunch of her stuff on my floor and hasn't come to collect it. <coughs> this was my first time actually attempting to use the mouse with my iPad, so this is literally a first impression at this point. I was just trying to find out what the buttons do initially. I do want to mention, you can go into accessibility settings, go to touch, then assistive touch, turn it on, then click on devices in which you can finally customize the buttons to use on an iPad. I learned about this afterwards, I had to look up a tutorial essentially. The scroll is still way too twitchy, I haven't found a sensitivity slider, and the button functions you can select are limited unless you'd like to spend some time making shortcuts. And the ones here are not intuitive in the way they work in my opinion. I don't like it and don't plan to use it much, but you may have a different experience. Logarithms, anyone? My math class is half precalculus and half trigonometry, with a bunch of homework in case you were wondering one of the reasons why school was consuming my life. Right now we're in the trig section of the class. Send help. The right click will work as a long press would, bringing up a menu for that item. Casual, shameless self plug. That bottom button works flawlessly. My MacBook is set to 1, iPad on 2, and nothing at 3, so I have to double click it to get it from my iPad to my MacBook. And that's it! I've been using this mouse for well over a month now, and I can say that for me, it's worth the cost. If you like my content, go ahead and like and subscribe for me and hit that bell because I'll only upload about every month or so, anyways. Thanks for watching!